Hey guys, Red Eyes here, and I'd like to welcome you to episode uh, 7, I believe it is, of my Hermitcraft LP. And yeah, uh, first of all, Happy New Year to everyone, and I hope you all had a good holiday season. Uh, unfortunately, mine was quite sad. Uh, my cat got, uh, well, he's been sick for a while, but he really went downhill. And unfortunately, on New Year's Eve, he passed away. So, uh, rest in peace, Coco, and thanks for all the good times, and my thoughts go out to uh, anyone else who's in a sad uh, period of their life. But life must go on. That's just, uh, just the way it is. So, anyways, what has been going on around here? Well, as you can see, there's my face up there, <laughs> so we're going to have to check that out. And also, around the base here, my performance has been going down and down, so you can see I'm in fast graphics. I'm only in the normal render uh, distance, and that seems to, to work okay. Uh, but otherwise, I get like 25 FPS. I've ordered some new hard drives. They should be here tomorrow, uh, so hopefully that will help, getting some SSD action. And, uh, I don't know, you know, I bought my PC three years ago, and that was just when the i7s were coming out. So I have an i7, but it's like a slow one. And I'm not sure what my options are. But I don't have the money to buy a full new PC. So I'm trying to make, a, you know, upgrades that I might be able to carry over to the next system. Anyways, the presents. Uh, I got a tree here from good old Jenny B, the master hermit. <laughs> and yeah, you've been a good hermit. And I got a nice diamond. Now, the only reason I got a nice one was because I didn't do any pranks. Uh, it's been quite busy all year, but now I do actually have a couple months of real time off. I've said I've had time off in the past, and that's sort of been the half-truth, but now I actually do. So you are going to be playing a lot of Minecraft. <laughs> and, oh yeah, I got another present here from DMAC, Unhost, Suzuma, and Josh. And that was on Suzuma's live stream. And yeah, blocks of iron. That must be from DMAX Iron Farm. And totally awesome. Very useful. Uh, yeah, I don't have much iron, so that's super useful. But the coolest thing about all these presents is not those, even though those are really good. <laughs> uh, it's actually what's behind this face here. Now, I think, well, someone told me what it was. And you'll see. Get around here, there's a bunch of signs, and amazingly enough, there's a wall of fans. I can't can't believe it. It was on Suzuma's live stream. They uh, came over here, made this thing, and I guess people on the stream left uh, their names if they wanted to. So I thank you all very much for the support. It does mean a lot. And oh, I just sort of want to get it so I can actually see all the names quickly and yeah it just reminds me that uh, you know it's there's actually people who who like my videos the numbers for view count sometimes you know they're just numbers and uh, seeing something like this really brings it home so definitely motivating and even if your name isn't on here you know I still appreciate all the support and I hope you guys enjoy the videos so basically, thank you very much. What else can I say? And let's see. I think I should show you a few of the things I've done around the base. All right, the first thing I made was this uh, potion room here, and it's pretty basic, uh, pretty easy to make. So I will probably do a separate tutorial on this, not just uh, for the, well, I guess it's just so I get better at making tutorials. But anyways, the way it works is you can see the water flows in from the corners and then when I step in here I get pushed towards the middle and whenever a dispenser is activated uh, the item will fall in the water and sort of aim towards me. So the way it works is you can see there's the ingredients uh, just in front of a dispenser there and below there are buttons or levers. Uh, the lever is just to be able to spam it faster because the buttons have quite a, a slow reset time and so you can get items quicker out if I replaced all the buttons with levers. The uh, main ingredients are on the side and then on the back wall here I have my options. 
So uh, it's mirrored on both sides, so I'll just show you one half. And I'll set uh, these options to on, they're selected. And these options here, the um, gunpowder and redstone, they will be not selected. And actually, just to get a better view, I'll knock these off as well. But just before we look at the redstone, I'll show you it in action. Uh, so whenever I hit a button, so I'll make some fire potions now. Hit that, you can see the stuff flies out. And at the same time, from the floor here, there's four dispensers, and three of them contain bottles, and one contains my nether wart. So then simply fill the bottles up. If they overflow, they'll get uh, thrown out, but then they, they funnel back towards you. And seems like I didn't fill enough bottles. And then I can just get to my potion making and do all that. And I can reach everything from the center here. When I originally built it, I built these two walls uh, too far back because I did it in creative mode and the reach is slightly further. But yeah, while that's cooking away, I'll just show you the redstone for, well, for the whole thing. So when you hit a button under these dispensers, it will trigger this redstone here. Uh, it is then sent to the back area here. There's a repeater to, uh, well, I guess you don't really need that repeater. But then it comes back into the options here. So uh, the pistons on these side are not selected, or this side is not selected, and this side the options are on. And so you can see when it's on, this dust here uh, points into this block here, which triggers this top dispenser. And the bottom one is a bit different. The redstone comes through here and then makes its way up uh, into this block here. And you can see there's a dispenser beside it. So uh, behind that piston there, there is a lever. And behind this uh, repeater, there's a lever as well. So you can see dust flowing into there and dust flowing into that block. And when it's deselected, this piston is retracted. So, whoop. <laughs> so this redstone here has nowhere to go. It doesn't trigger anything. And the one on the bottom, because the piston is retracted, it's cutting off this redstone. So the redstone doesn't flow into this block here. So very simple. Uh, only takes a few minutes to set up. And yeah, doesn't use very many resources. So pretty, pretty nice. So the final part, those four dispensers down there, you just simply have to get power to them. And I've done it by sending the power down there. And you can see it goes into this, oh, yeah, my mob, uh, mob pipe is right there. So it kind of gets in the way, but you can see those dispensers above there. So uh, repeater is sending power into the block into this dust and then it powers the other dispenser up there and on the other side it's just set out differently but there's lots of ways you can power them below uh, they don't have to be in this whoa <laughs> they don't have to be in this exact position or anything like that and i might move them because i'm still working on the design of the floor above and while we're down here you can also see the pistons which are holding back the water there you can see the water dripping down and again, these don't have any super specific placement and they can be powered uh, in, in many different ways. It's not too important. Uh, it's a separate circuit than the whole dispensing uh, ingredient thing. So uh, it doesn't really matter. But the only thing I would recommend is to make sure that when you're in the middle, you can actually reach the source blocks and that everything will flow towards you. And apart from that, it's pretty open. And I guess I took away these half blocks sort of pointlessly. So yeah, that is the basic potion room ready. It's uh, you know designed to learn the ingredients. It doesn't mix everything for you. The reason I have it set up uh, like this very simply is to learn the ingredients because I still make mistakes and stuff. And of course with the new blocks coming, I will be able to do much more interesting potion rooms, fully automated, that kind of thing. So that is pretty epic, or that will be pretty epic, I mean. <laughs>
But anyways, I think you probably got the idea on this potion room, so I'll move on to the next little invention, which is sort of related, because I needed to make a bunch of fermented spider eyes, and to do that, you need uh, brown mushrooms. So I thought I would make a mushroom farm. And here it is. And you, you may have seen these two things when Generic B came to my base and backstabbed me as I was concentrating on redstone, you know. Stabbing me in the back, come on. And I think he was completely invisible as well. He was just punching me, so I had no idea where he was. <laughs> but anyways, uh, this mushroom farm. So, it sort of works on the same principle as the bread maker. And that is that uh, when things grow, things happen. And so it's sort of detecting... Oh, I got some bones, that's good. Detecting when it's grown and when you've cut it all down. And the easiest thing to do is just show you how it works. And uh, the way it works is you plant a mushroom here. And you see I'm standing on this block here, but when I grow it, when I grow it, it drops down and some water pushes me towards the back here. And at this point, I should be able to reach the minecart above. Again, I made this in creative mode, so the reach is slightly further. But all I need to do to fix this is have the water push me up a little bit higher. And then I'll be able to reach this minecart and end up here. And now you can see the mushroom is in front of me. So I get out of the cart. I land on this pressure plate. It's always quite buggy in the SMP. But essentially I land on the pressure plate. Then I get pushed forward by this piston here and end up in the water. Now from this point I will harvest the mushroom and I'm silk touching this one because I want to get all the blocks and you can see all the mushrooms fall into the water and flow towards me and yeah I'll just speed through this or actually I'll just tell you some uh, things to know when building this I think you need a solid block seven blocks above where the bottom of the mushroom is and that way it will always grow at the same height, sort of at eye level. Uh, but yeah, you keep on harvesting it. And this block here is the last mushroom block. And you'll see that when I harvest it, I get pushed forward. So there is a piston behind here. Oh, I have my axe equipped. <laughs> Should have used that. Not, not used to that yet. But yeah, uh, when I release the last block, then this piston gets activated, so that would be it, and then it pushes you forward. Let me show you again. Harvest it, pushes again, so it works. Yeah, harvest it, pushes you forward, and that is it. So if I'm standing back here, you imagine the mushroom gets grown, the water flows out, pushing me towards the minecart, and then when I'm all done harvesting, uh, like so, the piston above pushes me back onto this piston which is now extended. Oh, dirt bikes outside. <laughs> yeah, so fairly, fairly simple. And I will just show you the redstone now. So, just keep your eye on that nether rack block there. Now that doesn't have to be netherrack, it's just to uh, locate it better. But the power will be coming through here when the mushroom is grown. So I'll just do a demonstration of that. Just make a torch quickly. Uh, in the new snapshot, I, the, the uh, item system isn't really working for me. It's very laggy. I'm always picking up the wrong thing. So hopefully they'll fix that. But yeah, power goes through, and up here I have an edge trigger, so that when power is turned off, then this torch receives a pulse. And that is controlling the top piston, which pushes you back. So, a uh, simple setup, I've got my repeater here set to 1, the one over here is set to 4. Going into a torch, and the first one is going into this block here. So yeah, I think that's called an edge trigger. 
And the other part of the system is even simpler. It's simply a on-off switch. So when the mushroom is grown, this torch will be off. And you can see that piston there retracts, thus allowing the water to flow out. So there's an edge trigger and an on-off switch for the piston at the bottom. And there you can see where the water is. So very simple to set up. And uh, the only thing I need to do is make the water flow a little bit higher here. And then I'll be able to reach that and use the whole farm with only one hand. So I can sit there stroking my, my other cat, the surviving one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, harvest mushrooms. So I think that's about it for now, for around the base. Uh, I did have some villagers in and I was breeding them up here and they got zombie attacked and they all died. I tried to revive some of them but it didn't didn't work. Or not revive, but you know, uh, change them into normal, change them back into normal villagers and uh, it didn't work for some reason. But actually while I'm thinking of villagers, Oh, I think, actually, before I go through, I've got to get equipped because there's a bunch of uh, blazes waiting for me on the other side. But yeah, anyways, just while I'm thinking about the villagers, there is one I have here, uh, just in the nether here. Yep, blaze right there. Chest on fire, or <laughs> furnace on fire. Uh, anyways, yeah, got a villager here. And he's offering 19 wheat for an emerald. And he also has another deal, which isn't so good. Gravel and emerald for flint. But I really need to get some emeralds. So I would like some advice on the best way to uh, approach this and maximize the amount of emeralds I can get. I have a ton of wheat waiting, so that's not a problem. But uh, I know the deal might vanish if I do it wrong. And I know it's been nerfed, but I'm, I'm still worried about making mistakes and just losing everything. So things are looking a little bit different here in the nether. Uh, this dirt is obviously temporary, but essentially what happened was... Oh yeah, I've started opening this up a little bit. I'm going to be doing more roof like this, half slabbing all the floors so nothing spawns, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, extending out these walkways, so half blocks there and half blocks uh, on the side there, just so you don't accidentally walk off. And I did a bit of work on the pads here, trying to make them look a bit nicer. Uh, and oh, there's a wither skeleton there, so I'm just gonna go and get my fortune sword. Uh, no, it's not fortune, it's looting, of course. How could I forget? And I heard you have to aim at the heads for these guys, but uh, I don't know. I haven't got a skull for a long time, and I've killed a lot of them, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, yeah, no skull there. But you can see I've started to change the design in these two pads. They're only too high, so the wither skeletons can't move around. And also uh, just trying to lighten everything up by putting grass in. I'll get rid of these. Now the grass has grown. Uh, still needs to go over there and over here. And I'll put a lighter wall at the back so I can clearly see when there is a wither skeleton spawned. Um, but yeah, they're looking nice. And I found that I had another double intersection just over here. Whoa. <laughs> so I thought I'd get out some TNT. Come on, I'm not gonna hurt you. I would never do that. <laughs> Ow. Oh yeah. Yeah, blasting through this stuff is uh, quite quite enjoyable. It goes very quick. So digging this out didn't take much time at all. And you can see I put in these sort of uh, checkerboard patterns on the floor here. So you can see the middle, or one of the intersections was around here, and another one was around here. And then on each level there's just uh, slightly different patterns, and again, too high. 
but the problem is there's three levels, and I think it would be much easier to deal with only two levels. And that's purely because it's sort of hard to see all the three levels at once. So there's a wither skeleton. So I might eliminate one of the levels, and I'm not going to keep this farm forever because it's... Oh yes! Awesome! <laughs> Finally! It's literally been so long since I got a skull. I'm very happy about that. But, yeah, as I was saying, it's hard to see all three levels. And... Well, over there, actually, I can see three levels. Oh yeah, I can see a wither skeleton. So maybe I will, but I need to work out a way of seeing them all very easily. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll have these farms forever. I will upgrade to a automatic farm at some point. Uh, but there's a lot of changes happening now. So I don't know when exactly I'll do that. I mean, changes with redstone and that kind of thing. But I'll just show you where it's going to be. And it's going to be a perimeter-type farm, so... Uh, you know, I have to eliminate all the spawning areas around. Only allow them to spawn in... Oh, nice. Only allow them to spawn in my farm. And the farm is going to be right... Oops. Right at the edge of this uh, fortress in the middle of the lava lake uh, over there. And I'm going to get blasted off if I'm not careful here. That's a risky jump. Um, yeah, I'm not going to try and jump the corner there. That's like guaranteed failure. So, come over here. And you can see there's this this one wing of the, the feather, feather fortress. <laughs> That's what this game needs, is feather fortresses. I've realized in the nether here I can... Uh, Pump this up to to far, I think. Get much better performance in the nether. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Come out on this wing of the nether fortress here. And you can see I'm sort of far away from everything else. There's lots of these small little islands, which are only two or three blocks thick. So it'll be very easy to get rid of. And uh, the annoying part is going to be eliminating the spawning areas up at the top there. There's quite a bit of room up there. And also the ledges over there. Like you can see there's a bunch of pigmen up there. So I'll have to deal with all that. So yeah, it's going to be quite a small farm. Because, you know, this isn't very wide. And wither skeletons can only spawn uh, within, I think it's a 5 by 10 high area in here. But if I eliminate all the spaces around, it will work very well, regardless. But yeah, I'm not quite ready to do that. But around here, there is also another bonus, which is another witch hut. So the program you use to find witch huts is called Amidst. A-M-I-D-S-T. So you search for Amidst mapping tool, and it will show you where these things are because otherwise you probably are going to spend a lot of time uh, trying to find them. Now, when I came here first, there was a witch, uh, so I know they definitely spawn in here. I haven't seen one spawn at the other witch hut I found. And basically, the other witch hut is going to be much easier to make into an efficient farm. But over here, it's just a really nice area, I think. Uh, and I've got to change the graphics back to fancy. Yeah, that's much better. Just seemed, <laughs> seemed pretty weird. The nether is pretty similar in fast and fancy, but uh, in the real world, got to be fancy. <laughs> okay, so you can see there's a nice big ice biome thing over there. There's a nice mountain there in the distance. Uh, the swamp here isn't very big, I don't think. Although I haven't really explored over there too far. Maybe it does go off, off a ways. And then there's another biome here. There's this um, plains biome. And then there's a jungle over there. Uh, the only thing is there aren't many animals around. This is chicken here is the only guy I've seen. So I will spare you. 
lucky guy. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, just as a place to be, I think it's quite nice. It'll be a lot of work to make it into a efficient witch farm. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just a nice area. And while I'm here, I need some ice. Wow. I <laughs> wasn't expecting that. And just while I'm here in the nether, I almost forgot. Uh, I need to ask you guys a favor. Uh, well, if you agree with me, of course. But when I was thinking about this wither farm, the automatic one, I of course thought about using minecarts. And the thing is, minecarts, uh, using minecarts, you can make a wither skeleton separator very simply. You just stick them in a cart, and then they will trigger a string, which is uh, three blocks above. So you imagine you had uh, a string thing. God, this item system is so laggy for me. If you have a string up there and a wither skeleton in a cart there, he'll trigger the string up there. But normal mobs, or too high mobs, won't trigger it. So that is a way to separate them. Now the problem is, in the nether, uh, magma cubes. That is the problem. They can spawn absolutely anywhere. So they can spawn in a one by one space, I believe. And basically that means they can spawn on your minecart tracks. And that means minecarts are pretty much useless in the nether. Uh, because if I do a... Uh, I took that fire potion. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, I need that. <laughs> if I do a minecart system for mobs, which I would like to do... Uh, whoa! This is the separator system, at least. Uh, then, you know, the only stuff spawning would be around here. So there'd be a very high chance of magma cubes spawning on the tracks. And in the uh, test world I made, where I, you know, made a very high efficiency farm of the design I want to do, that's what happened. Magma cubes spawned on the tracks, and they just mess everything up. So if you have a Twitter, or however you do it, contact Mojang and ask them to uh, nerf magma cubes spawning a bit. And... Uh, just make it so that we can actually use carts, um, you know, because it's it's very silly, really. And I know Mojang wants to push the use of carts. That's one of the reasons they're uh, they're adding the hopper block, which you know feeds items into chests. So they they want people to use carts more. And this is one thing that's very restrictive in the Nether is the magma cube spawning. So I thought I would set up a little test just to verify that magma cubes do indeed spawn on the rails in a one high space. Maybe it's not one by one, but you know, I want to be able to have the rails three wide at some point, so... As you can see, there's a magma cube in there. I didn't put him there. And that will ruin your whole cart system. Bye-bye! <laughs> and also, just so you know, my plan for this area, currently, uh, is to knock out a bunch of the fortress here so I get a clear view between the two uh, spawning pads so I can see these wither skeletons spawning and uh, then I'll, I'll figure out what to do. Um, so I'll probably change how the minecarts come in. They'll probably come in uh, over there, like through that wall and you'll arrive sort of down here somewhere. Anyways, come on. Give me your skulls. Oh yes! Man, that must be it. Because it must be aiming at the head which helps. Because I, I killed like, I must have killed at least a hundred of them. And now I suddenly get two skulls and I didn't get any for a long time. But I was aiming at the feet. And I don't know, I've been told you don't have to aim at the head. But it's sort of seems logical. Maybe that's only in FTB, because that's where I saw the information. Not that I play FTB. <laughs> Maybe one day, but not yet. Anyways, that's awesome. Another skull. I might just try and uh, go for another one, because I'm at 8 now, and 9 would be pretty good. That would be 3 withers. Yeah, i got to do it.
Oh no! Goodbye, looting sword. I should have seen that coming. It's been low for a while. Uh, it just wasn't concentrating. Ah, that's pretty annoying. Uh, it's just a normal skelly. <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> Get him back! Get him! Defend your honor! Come on! Don't get me, I'm not the one attacking you. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's funny, I love it when stuff like that happens. So that's the plan. Uh, I'll be probably working on here quite a lot. Someone said I needed to clean up and uh, yeah, that kind of, that struck a chord. I need to clean up, I need to make this place look better. So I'll be working on that a bit. And there's other projects going on, of course. Uh, might go and see Shishwami right now, see what he's up to. And yeah, I think that'll do for this episode. I don't want to cram too much in. I would rather start putting out more videos. And if I try and cram everything in, it's not really going to work. Because I'll have uh, shown everything. So I will say thanks for watching. And I hope you all had a good holiday. And you are having a happy new year. And my fire potion is worn out. And that is my cue to get out of here. Okay, bye bye. Thanks for watching. Oh, not again. I don't know if I can run past that guy. But I guess I'll find out. No.